Hi, everyone. We're so pleased to be here with you today. And we have incredibly exciting things to share about building engaging map experiences. I'm Mira, engineering lead on the Google Maps platform team. And I'm Alicia, product manager on the Google Maps platform team. We're thrilled to share free brand new customization and styling features that are launching today and how you can make the most of these features to create engaging and highly customized geospatial apps. First, let's do a quick recap. Our team previously announced the preview release of data-driven styling for boundaries, which allows you to customize the appearance of Google's polygons on your maps. Today, our team is thrilled to be launching data-driven styling for boundaries in general availability on the Maps JavaScript API. You can control the look and feel of regions such as countries, states, counties, and more. That's right. Google Map Platform's map data is styleable at your fingertips, customizable for your geospatial application. During the preview phase, we evolved our features and data quality to meet our high standards for production readiness. Our boundary data, localized place names, and styling capability improvements are now available in the weekly and quarterly channels of the Maps.js API. But how does this all work? Let's take a look. In this example, we will build a map that uses the number of national parks in each state or province in North America, or administrative area ones, to determine their fill color. The darker the shade of green, the more national parks there are in that state or province. First, we'll head over to the Cloud Console and create a map ID with JavaScript vector maps enabled. Next, we'll create a new map style and select Administrative Area 1 from the Feature Layers dropdown. As you may have noticed, these feature layers correspond to the same place types used in the Places SDKs and APIs. After associating this map style with our map ID from earlier, we can go to our code editor to style these feature layers. We'll start with a simple JavaScript app that loads a map with the same map ID and style where we just enabled data-driven styling. By default, no borders or boundaries are styled, so we can begin with a blank canvas. Next, we store the feature layer that corresponds to administrative area ones, that is, our states and provinces. Then we assign a styler function to the feature layer, which sets the stroke color to green and the fill color to a lighter shade of green. We have now styled a map with all the admin area ones colored green. Great work! Now, let's change the fill colors according to the number of national parks in each region. For this example, we have stored this table as a dictionary with national park counts key to their region's name. If you want, you can get your data in other ways, like reading your values from a database or using real-time data. Now, let's restyle our features using these values. First, let's store the current features ID, which we'll call current place ID. Then, we need to find how many national parks are in the admin area one that have the same ID as current place ID. Wait, how can we find that? Great news. The new text search just launched in preview, which we can use to look up place IDs. For more info on how to use this API, please check out our documentation. Using the place IDs we've looked up, we can find how many national parks are in the place that matches current place ID. Finally, we customize the color of each admin area one feature, and voila, we're done. We've just created a beautiful coral plef map where we can see how the number of national parks varies across states and provinces in North America. There you have it, the power to style our rich map data now in your hands. If you've tried data-driven styling for boundaries in preview, thank you. Your feedback was critical to helping us improve this feature for GA. But wait, there's more. We're going to make things even better with another brand new feature. We are super excited to be bringing you data-driven styling for datasets, now launching in preview on the Maps JavaScript API. You can easily style and visualize your geospatial data on the map, including customer-owned, open-sourced, and purchased geospatial data. This enables you to harness the full power and scale of Google Cloud's infrastructure to manage, protect, and secure your data. 
You can create unique visualizations that provide more context to users on areas they care about, helping them make more informed decisions and save time, such as with point datasets, like these airports around the world, or polylines, like these subway lines in New York, or polygons, like these national parks in Canada, you'll be able to customize and style all your geometry according to your data values. Dataset formats supported include KML, CSV, and GeoJSON, which you can upload directly or manage from your Google Cloud Storage bucket. And of course, it all works with data-driven styling for boundaries. So how does this work? Let's dive right in. Today, we'll use data-driven styling for datasets to build this map that shows picnic tables, hiking trails, parks, and postal codes or zip codes, courtesy of data-driven styling for boundaries. We'll also learn how to style geometry using values from our own datasets, like these parks that are filled in with a color calculated from the size of their land area. Let's get started. Like our first app, we will kick things off by heading over to the Cloud Console. The first time we visit the datasets page, we'll be asked to enable the Maps Datasets API. This API allows you to import store, and manage your geospatial data server side in the Google Cloud Console. After enabling the API, we'll need to create credentials and a service account so that we can manage our data sets securely. OK, let's go back to our data sets page. I'm going to import this set of picnic tables that I put into my Google Cloud Storage bucket earlier. Alternatively, we could upload this data set directly from our machine. Now that our data set has finished processing, let's examine it in the Google Cloud Console. On this details page, I can see that everything looks good. If I wanted to, I could edit its name or description here. On the Preview tab, I can get an early look at where my data is located on a map. My data set doesn't have a style yet, so this map is only a preview, but this first look helps me develop more efficiently. We've already set up a map ID and style similar to what we did earlier. Now all we need to do is associate our data set to our style and we are done with setting things up. Okay, let's head over to our code editor. Like last time, we're going to start with a fresh slate. At this point, our JS app only loads a plain map with our map ID. Our data set is enabled on our map, but nothing is styled by default. So we get to start with a fresh canvas. In order to get the dataset feature layer, we need to get its dataset ID, which we can find in the Cloud Console. Using this dataset ID, we can retrieve its matching feature layer from the map and restyle our picnic tables. Our styling properties are mostly the same as those we saw earlier with data-driven styling for boundaries, except for this new addition, point radius, which is applied only when restyling point geometries from your datasets. Ta-da! our point data set of picnic tables customized like a red picnic table cloth. Now that we've mastered the basics, let's kick it up a notch. To bring in our hiking trails and parks, let's go back to the Cloud Console and import these two data sets. As before, I uploaded these to my Google Cloud Storage bucket earlier, so once they're done processing, we'll associate them with the minimal light style, same as we did with the picnic table data set. Since this style is already associated with our app's map ID, we're all set. Let's go back to our code editor. It's time to style our two datasets. As you might imagine, it's the same drill as before. Pop in the dataset ID, get the dataset feature layer from the map, and restyle. There you go. We'll leave the last one as an exercise to try on your own. Bringing in our postal code or zip code boundaries is just as easy. Simply associate the feature layer with the same map style in the Cloud Console and customize it just like we did in the first part of this talk. And now for the data-driven part. Visualizing insights from your data has never been easier. To show you how, we'll modify our app to render parks using a color that is set by their land area. To clean up our map, we'll deactivate our picnic tables and hiking trails by setting their stylers to null. Next, we'll update our park layer styler function to get its dataset attributes from the current feature. In this case, our dataset file has a field called shape area. Then we use a helper function to convert the resulting park area into a hex color value and restyle the feature. That's it. 
To recap, today we learned how to use data-driven styling to build engaging experiences that leverage Google's map data and Google Cloud's secure and scalable infrastructure. Most importantly, we've seen how you can bring your data to life and build compelling visualizations that tell your story. A huge thanks to everyone who made data-driven styling possible. But hang on, there's one more awesome feature that will really make your map experience pop. I'll turn it over to Alicia to tell you all about it. Thanks, Mira. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to talk about advanced markers, which you may be familiar with from our preview announcement back in October of 2022. For many of you, putting a marker on a map was your first experience using the Google Maps API. And often, it's your first step in using Google's knowledge of the real world to build immersive and helpful mapping experiences for your users in every corner of the globe. No matter what the use case or industry, the marker is almost always a core element for a map-based experience. One of our developer community's top requests has been for more advanced marker capabilities that are easy to use. With the preview release of Advanced Markers, we opened a whole new world of possibility to provide a richer user experience, showcase your brand, and save time and resources. And today, we're excited to announce that these capabilities are now generally available for all Maps JavaScript API customers. So what can you do with Advanced Markers? A few of the key features include changing the outline, color, glyph of the default marker, creating markers using images, SVGs, custom HTML elements, collision behavior management with other markers as well as labels on the base map, setting the altitude of markers, and we've also made performance and accessibility improvements so you and all of your users can get a better marker experience at scale right out of the box. Let's get started by looking at the basics of what you can do with advanced markers. So to make advanced markers available in your app, specify that you want to include the new marker library by adding libraries equals marker to the URL query parameters when you load the Maps JavaScript API. When you're loading other libraries, add the marker as a comma-separated value. To add an advanced marker to a map, start by loading a map with a map ID. Next, Create a new instance of the advanced marker view class by calling new google.maps.marker.advancedMarkerView and passing an options object. At a minimum, you should set the position and map properties to make your advanced marker appear on your map. You can also set other options like title, Z index, collision behavior, and more. For a complete list of our options, please see our documentation. Next, let's talk about customization. By default, an advanced marker will be displayed using the default red pin. If you want to customize an advanced marker to something other than the default pin, you can provide one of three different customization types by setting the content property in the options object when you create the marker. First, you can use an image by loading it as an HTML image element or by using an SVG element. Second, you can use a custom HTML element. For these, all you have to do is provide a reference to the DOM element to the content property of your advanced markers. Finally, we made it easy to customize all of the parts of the iconic Google Maps pin, including the background, border color, scale, glyph, and glyph color of the new PinView class. To use PinView, create an instance of googlemaps.marker.pinview and pass it an options object that describes your desired customizations. A pin view instance is used to customize your advanced marker in the same way as the other options I described, by providing it in the content property of the options when you create an advanced marker. In addition, all advanced marker instances are added to the DOM as HTML elements. So whether you choose to use an image, an SVG, custom HTML element, or a pin view to customize your advanced marker, you can manipulate it in the same way you would any normal DOM element. This means that you can dynamically generate the content for your markers, style them using CSS, animate them using CSS transitions like you would any other HTML element. That's pretty great, right? From support for more image formats and custom HTML elements to new ways to customize the default pin icon to handling marker collision behavior and more, with advanced markers, you now have more ways to customize the markers in your map experiences than ever before. 
We're excited to see the customized and immersive map experiences that you'll build for your users with data-driven styling and advanced markers. To get started, check out the demos and the blog link below, give it a try in your app, and let us know what you think. You can also visit our website at mapsplatform.google.com to learn more. Stay in the know, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And no matter where in the world you are, have an awesome I.O., everyone.